you get a pen and you hold it between your thumb and your index finger, and then you take the fleshy pad underneath your pinky, the pinky heel, and you place it right on the tabletop so that the pen leans at about a 45 degree angle and your hand leans at the opposing 45 or maybe 65 degree angle, and you simply scribble back and forth, you'd be making actually a very common guitar picking motion. Now that sounds weird, right? But if we take away the pen and we simply substitute a guitar pick, as you can see, uh, as you can see, we have a problem. I cannot reach our virtual guitar here, the tabletop. Well, how do I fix that? I do it just like this. And now, the middle finger or three finger pick grip allows us to perform one of the most famous picking motions of all time, and that is, of course, the technique of the amazing Eddie Van Halen. You can see the distinctive appearance of Eddie's signature middle finger pick grip and pen scribbling wrist based picking motion. When you watch Eddie doing this motion, it just looks like he's moving his hand side to side. And again, if I do this on the tabletop with a pen, it kind of looks similarly like a side to side wrist motion. But if I continue doing this motion and I put it up in the air, what kind of wrist motion is it? Well, check that out. It's just not side to side at all. It's actually a steep diagonal. In Cracking the Code, we call this motion a one o'clock wrist motion. Because if you imagine an analog clock in front of you, the picking motion actually moves on a diagonal from about seven o'clock down here to one o'clock and back again. This type of wrist motion is common in guitar playing, especially for strumming techniques, where it often works in conjunction with the forearm. Strumming motions like this are done with a motion that includes a little forearm, but it's really the hand swinging back and forth that gives it away as the wrist motion that it is. Eddie actually makes slightly different versions of this motion. This one, which is the one o'clock motion, and this one, which is closer to two o'clock. You can see from the motion pads that these two wrist motions actually move along opposing diagonals. That shallow back and forth scribbling motion, that's Eddie's two o'clock motion, being performed with his signature middle finger grip and supinated arm position. So why does Eddie do this crazy thing with his pick grip? It turns out it's all connected. The arm position determines the hand position and the pick grip connects the hand to the guitar. So when Eddie uses this supinated or slightly turned arm position, he needs to use a middle or three finger pick grip to reach the guitar. And this in turn enables the wrist motion that he likes best. And of course, when we use this form, it turns out to be similar to the form that many of us use when we write with a pen. Now, even with this more vertically oriented arm, I still have to move flat side to side with the wrist. And of course, when I put this up in the sky, that is where my more vertical one o'clock motion path comes from. Now, in theory, we could actually turn a little bit less even while holding a pen, maybe use an index finger grip and still move side to side with the pen. That's where that two o'clock aspect comes from. And this is just not that common of a form for writing. So that's why we said, okay, the pen test is gonna be our test of one o'clock motion because it uses the more vertical arm position and moves side to side. When we assume our pen scribbling form, we're actually closer to the one o'clock variant of the motion. So that's the one we're test driving here. So one o'clock wrist motion, rather counterintuitively, not in fact a side to side wrist motion at all. And yet when I do this with a pen on a tabletop, it actually feels quite comfortable. We can test this too and run this up the metronome to see how far it goes. But remember when we did our flexion extension wrist test, we added one layer of technical complexity to that. We added tempo. We said you have to do it twice per metronome click. We have to tap twice per beat. Down up would give us two notes and then down up again for the other two notes, giving us four notes per beat. Well, in this case now, um, not only do we have to do this motion twice per metronome click, but because the motion moves side to side on our tabletop, I'm now also asking my hand to simultaneously tap sideways on our copy of Live Without a Net. And that's actually 
a little bit tricky to coordinate these various things. So this test is going to be a little bit harder and require a little bit more skill than our previous tests. But nevertheless, let's see how far we get with it. I've got this set to 150 beats per minute here. Let's see how it works. No problem, let's get up to 170. And let's uh, try 190. No big deal. Now again, 190 is a pretty fearsome tempo. And there are times in concert where you can see Eddie utilize this motion for very rapid tremolo picking up in this 190, 200 beats per minute range. And it's super effective. This wrist motion is one that Eddie is very rapid with. Cracking the Code viewers, are you working on your pick and motion? Because if so, you've got to check out the Pick Slanting Primer. We got all kinds of fun hands-on tests, just like the one you're watching. We got speed tests, like tests of every kind of pick and motion. Van Halen wrist motion, Deliola wrist motion, Tricep elbow motion, time. forearm motion. We got close-up shots, overhead shots. Everything you need to learn this stuff. You can get it as part of a subscription, either short time or a long time. You could buy a copy, and if you do, you get free updates for life. We've got people that bought this thing five years ago and are still getting multiple free updates per year. We add hours of new stuff every year as we conduct more interviews and learn more about how technique works. So head on over to TroyGrady.com forward slash primer. Check it out. Okay, that's 190 beats per minute. Let's bump it up a little faster. Let's hit 210 here. Okay, I can do that, but now I'm, it's getting to that range, you know, the, the rock discipline range where I'm like, I don't know if I can maintain the coordination. Go to like 216. So if I bump it up, um, we can try 220. Let's just go up only 10 beats per minute. And I think we're pretty much at the end of the road here. Ah. <laughs> a little bit weird, right? So I can kind of kind of get it, but you know, I may be able to to eke out another few bars at 2:30 or something like that. But if I'm thinking in terms of practical usage where I want the tempo to be even and I want the motion to feel smooth, 210 beats per minute or so is probably a reasonable practical uh, maximum. This is pretty much where my motions feel most comfortable with a pick and an actual guitar. So this test, unlike the flexion extension table tapping test, seems to be a little bit more of an accurate read on real world picking speed where we don't have that extra 10 to 15% conversion factor that we have to drop in there. However, if you're new to guitar playing or even if you're new to this motion, this needing to, to move sideways and, and do it twice per click and actually tap on something that makes a sound while you're doing it is asking now, we're starting to get um, a higher bar. For, of technical complexity just to perform the test. So to make it simpler, one thing you could do is simply get rid of, let's put this back down to an easy tempo, like 190, easy tapping tempo, <laughs> and, uh, and just get rid of the tapping and just see if you can perform the motion itself um, in time with your click source. Now I can, but interestingly, I find it a little bit more confusing because I don't have the sonic feedback, even though Tapping sideways like this is a little tricky, but trying to keep it in time has now become kind of an issue because I don't have, there's like a thing I, I can't really hear, it's just kind of a scratchy sound. So now, um, what can we do to make this a little simpler? Well, we can dispense with the metronome and the tapping, and you can just take the pen and scribble really rapidly on the desktop for at least a couple seconds. That actually is the simplest of all of them. That feels really smooth and really easy. If you find that this type of Eddie Van Halen pencil scribbling 
is uh, a motion that feels comfortable to you. Well, it should. This is a really common wrist motion that you may already make, and capitalizing on that skill for alternate picking may simply involve doing a little experimenting with a more eddy style pick grip. Wrist motions don't necessarily only move back, back and forth, or they don't necessarily move side to side in the way that we often think. Very many common guitar picking motions move along one of these more vertical diagonals. And if you find this motion to be comfortable, well, you may very well have some luck with a middle or three finger pick grip. And I would head right on over to the Pick Slanting Primer chapters where we teach you how to do these motions and give this a shot. You may very well be surprised. Yeah.